So there's been an interview recently published courtesy of Esquire featuring the one and only Kid Cudi. And I have to say the pictures are phenomenal. Kid Cudi does know how to take great pictures. He obviously looks amazing in clothes. He's obviously effortlessly cool and just a real what I would say capital A artist in terms of how he carries himself, what he talks about, his musical interest, how eclectic and kind of uh, um, Marmite his music is nowadays. You know, he completely moved away from the sound that I would guess make him, made him popular and made him legendary. And he's just doing stuff that he kind of basically enjoys. And for the most part, you know, exploring other projects outside of music, like acting and whatnot. So just living the full kind of life a creative should lead and somebody of his kind of caliber so i feel it i get it i understand but the beef with kanye has been very interesting to watch from afar really interesting because as a fan it's disappointing because you feel like they're far better together right they're far stronger together uh, musically and you know just i guess personally too because they're so freaky in whatever that they do you'd, you'd probably you'd probably it'd probably be safe to assume that they probably you know see a lot of each other in each other as well so that, that creative collaboration must be just amazing so it's a real shame that we're going to miss out a lot of it but for me it is quite cool to also see somebody quote unquote standing up to kanye especially somebody within his friendship circle because as a long time kanye fan especially somebody that had to endure all the nonsense that he you know subjected us to during his presidential run and that kind of mental breakdown breakthrough you know whatever he was going through with kim in the beginning like just nonsense things that he kind of subjected us fans to and made us kind of you know argue for things that didn't make complete sense it was also quite frustrating during that time to hear so to hear so little from his fans. So no, so little from his close friends and collaborators when he was obviously freaking out and in some ways damaging his legacy, um, ruining kind of you know the memory that he has in in his fans' head and stuff like just doing irreparable damage. The damage is probably now he probably still hasn't recovered from. I think in certain general, I think that whole run maybe it's a good thing if you're an artist because you get to cleanse your fan base. But that whole presidential run and the nonsense around it and everything else before it calling trump your daddy i think that has turned off some fans that have never really ever come back because i know even for myself i stopped really caring about him as a person after that stuff and just started seeing him more as an artist and i could definitely separate the art from the artist um but or just started to enjoy his art and his output whatever it may be right but didn't really care too much about his personal life but i guess when you were a kanye stan and a fan like i was part of the beauty or part of the fun of it was caring about everything that he did right caring about his personal life what he thought about this what he thought about that that's why we like the rant so much at concerts but now people just turn that off because they just feel like he's mentally ill or whatnot or he doesn't know what he's talking about you know bloody blah, blah 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 so um it was really annoying during that time i felt like for me personally, I'm talking for me personally on my side of things. I find it really annoying how his collaborators just had nothing to say. His close friends, collaborators, nothing to say when he was doing the most, you know, reprehensible things. I feel like if anybody else in the community, black community did the same things who wasn't Kanye, they would have a lot more to say. But because they wanted to protect their connection with him, protect their, you know, their favours, protect the fact that he's got clout and they can use his name or whatever it may be, they all kind of kept completely stumped. So in a weird way, it is quite refreshing to see somebody within Kanye's circle, quote unquote, standing up to him and not being worried that you're going to basically isolate yourself from one of the biggest stars in the world. Somebody that is obviously turned himself into a creative powerhouse, a proper legit mogul um, who's probably going to be around for a long, long time influencing culture. It is a big risk to take, but you know for whatever happened behind the scenes to the point where Cuddy just doesn't feel like the relationship is re is repairable and he doesn't want him around his life anymore it is quite commendable but on the other side of things it is probably a bad move to do this interview with Esquire and spend the entire I don't know second half of the interview basically ranting about Kanye because if anything that we know about Kanye is that he does enjoy when he knows he gets under people's skin and he has a really good he has a really kind of um impressive um ability to do that with his words he's able to kind of really get under people's skin really sort of like twist the knob twist the knob and really make them feel bad about themselves whether it's a you know Wiz Khalifa cool pants I'm just thinking off the top of my head and maybe it's a few others but he has the ability to really kind of poke people and get them to react in a weird way and I guess this is probably the example of it so I'm going to quickly read an example of it I think it's at towards the bottom but there's many mentions of Kanye down. But I think it's towards the bottom, maybe towards the second paragraph that he just starts ranting on and on about Kanye. It's pretty, pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. 
Where is it? Um, you declined to say the. I think this is it. Yeah, it's come up here. Okay, cool. So yeah. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this is so here. So um, this is where it kind of starts him kind of ranting. And Kanye says, so, so, yeah, it's courtesy of Esquire. So it's a really good magazine article. I recommend you check it out. It's a cover story. Check it out if you haven't already. It says, he and West have been, he and West have tivered for more than a decade as both friends and collaborators. Ever since Cuddy signed to West label um, Good Music in, 20, in 2008, they appeared in each other's recent documentaries and multiple other projects, though Cuddy sees in an imbalance. He says, I've been on every one of that man's album. He's only been on two of mine. That should tell you something. See, and that's the thing that I don't like. They only say these things when they fall out with him. But at the time, no one says anything because they're licking his ass so much. So there are people within Kanye's circle who they feel as if they do everything for him, but he doesn't reciprocate it. But because it's Kanye, they don't want to ever say anything because they don't want to risk losing that friendship and that connect. It's a strange, strange thing. And I think I've always kind of felt that way, especially when it comes to men, like sucking off other men like that. It's always made me feel uncomfortable, especially even when it comes to maybe creative stuff and art stuff, because I always feel like... I get it. There are some people that are geniuses and once in a lifetime creatives and artists and whatnot and thought leaders. But for the most part, these ideas are basically stuff that we've all kind of had in a weird way, one way or the other, especially if you've been around long enough and you expose yourself to the scene and hanging around and networking and things. We can all come up with a good idea for a sneaker. We can all come up with a good idea for a stage show, a good idea for a product activation, a good idea for an album roll. Like we've all got it in us. I'm pretty sure we've all got at least one good idea in us for a each of those things so to sit there and suck off and bread somebody who happens to do it at a really high level it just feels a little bit uncomfortable for me it doesn't really it's not really that's not the person i would want to do that kind of stuff for if there was another version of flipping einstein or something right yeah maybe that would be the person you'd want to do that kind of thing for but Hey, Kanye West, I never really understood it. Anyway, it continues. Um, it says, and and don't think I didn't ask, he said. Over the years, the two have repeatedly feuded, mostly over creative differences, but they always reconciled. Then in February of this year, West announced that Cuddy wasn't featured on his album, Donda 2. On Instagram, he posted a photo of Cuddy posing with Chamolet and Pete Davidson, who famously was dating Kanye's ex-wife, Kim. The picture had X over David's face, Davidson's face, sorry. Cuddy responded with a tweet calling West a dinosaur, adding, everyone knows I've been the best thing about your album since i met you i'm a pray for you brother in april cuddy wrote on twitter that they were no longer friends so clearly things moved to a level that you know he couldn't really fuck with anymore i love that he's wearing the fucking virgil lablo um louis vuittons there um do you know how it feels to wake up one day look at your social media and you're trending because somebody's talking some shit about you he says um and then you got his this person's troll sending you messages on instagram and twitter all in your comments that shit pissed me off that he had the power to fuck with me that week, that he used his power to fuck with me. That pissed me off. He adds gravely, you fucking with my mental health now, bro. Cuddy eventually brushed it off and burrowed into his peace bubble. The mental health thing I hate because it means basically no one can take the piss out of you. No one can argue with you. No one can diss you. No one can take the piss. No one can rib you. Just no one can get any kind of spat with you because immediately people are going to be like, oh, mental health, mental health. So that's a bit of an issue for me personally. But... I do think it was pretty, um, I, pre I do think it was pretty repugnant for Kanye to do what he did to Cuddy, knowing how his fans are online and knowing how they react. Now, again, it's not his responsibility how they respond to things, but you have to be, you have to be somewhat mindful of what your fans are going to do with that kind of information, especially Kanye stands. They're very much like Kanye or die. Do you know what I mean, it doesn't matter who it is. They're always going to choose Kanye over that other person. So the fact that that happened that way was not really the greatest. And it continues anyway. It says, here in the studio, he leans forwards on his chair, a blunt between his fingers, and he says, I'm at a place in my life where I have zero tolerance for the wrong energies. I've watched so many people throughout the years that are close to him be burned by him during um, some fucked, or doing some fucked up shit, and then they turn around and forgive him. There's no repercussions. You're back cool with this man. He does it over and over again, which is something that I've noticed a lot of, kind of again, being from the outside looking in. And that's because I've, you know, I know certain people who are close to him. I know certain people who are friends of him. I know some people who are collaborators of him. And it always did, did again disturb me, like how 
sometimes you'd hear these stories about how badly he treated people or how badly he spoke to people or whatever it may be, the demands he put on people, whatever it may be, right? Rudeness, bluntness, lack of compassion, whatever, whatever it may be, right? And you just think to yourself, this guy clearly sucks as a human being, but he, for whatever reason, people just can't stop keep away from him there's nothing he can do and legitimately one of the breaking points for me revelation of it was like wow this guy can get away with anything was the trump stuff because at the time when trump was president of the united states for whatever reason the media painted him as a racist which is obviously i think insane you know he might be a bad president he might be an oaf he might be um you know a grifter and stuff but to say he's a stone cold racist is a bit insane but at the time, he was looked at as essentially Adolf Hitler, especially within the black community, right? Or especially within the left-leaning politics. And it just in it just kind of boggled my mind that he could, number one, wear a MAGA hat, and number two, say Trump was his daddy and hug him live on TV, and still all these kind of hip-hop alumni people, people that you would think would be a lot more kind of rah-rah with their politics and Black Lives Matter and whatnot, they were so fast to jump back on that album again when it was kind of album time and recording and going back with him in the recording studio or sorry, in that stadium, whatever he did. Like, it was really bizarre, but it also kind of was a clear indication that Kanye can do no wrong in some people's eyes. He's legitimately untouchable. And I guess if you're somebody who's kind of on the wrong end of that sort of stuff it can be a little bit aggregating do you know what I mean to kind of see that from afar that he's treating these people with such lack of respect but they just keep running back and back and again and again and again and Cuddy's another example too because if he was cool he wouldn't have mentioned any of this stuff right so the fact that he's only mentioning it now because they're not cool publicly because Kanye basically said we're not friends anymore you know isn't really that commendable but I still understand where he's coming from because it does feel like Kanye does get away with absolute murder within his friendship group like it absolute murder like he can literally do no wrong um, which is pretty pretty insane um it continues here uh he says he addresses west directly he says i'm not one of your kids which is oh, one of them i'm not kim which again is a i think a backhanded insult to her it doesn't matter if i'm friends with pete or not friends with pete none of this shit had anything to do with me if you can't be a grown man and deal with the fact that you've lost your woman that's not my fucking problem you need to own up to a shit like every man in his life has i've lost women i've lost women too and i've had to own up to it i don't need that in my life i don't need it and that's very very true because apart from how funny the whole affair was between kim and kanye and pete davidson and the whole banter behind it and the memes and the music videos we got the way kanye acted was pretty disgusting if we're being completely honest right basically wishing that man death killing him in the music video the flipping new york the fake new york times cover the constant you know probing and harassment and mickey taking online all this sort of stuff was really really bad if we're thinking about it i know you know both sides played the game kim did plant some stories pete davidson's camp did some stuff too he'd released the screenshots or whatnot his friend did whatever may happen you know they were all kind of you know um to blame for that whole affair but the way he went on as well was so bizarre like it's as if like he's never ever been told no before maybe that was what happened maybe that was finally somebody in a very public way somebody that he had kids with i think amber rose maybe didn't count because you know they were just dating but because they had four kids together he maybe thought he had ownership over kim forever and the fact that she decided now nah, enough's enough i not taking your shit anymore even though he'd done so much for her career and she'd done so much for him you know what i mean you just feel like sometimes i guess as a guy you just feel as if like you just take someone for granted sometimes you feel as if yeah she's super in love with me i'm not really that in love with her then one day you wake up and she's not at home anymore and i don't think he ever really kind of thought that would happen and he just reacted in such a weird way especially for like how old is this kanye 44 45 47 he's a grown-ass man to be acting that way so it was pretty insane to him to be like you know if you're pete's friend you're dead to me <laughs> it's like bro we're not 21 we're not 90 because th those things happen when you're really young right when you kind of fall out with somebody but then your other friends are friends with them too and deep down you feel like why are you still talking to them if i don't like them you should not be their friends either but then you also don't want to say it out loud because it kind of makes you look like you're in your feelings so you just keep it to yourself then you blow up one time do you know what I mean like well, you have those kind of things happen but then when you're a grown-ass person you don't care if your friends continue being friends with your ex because you gives a shit you know what i mean they're adults maybe they met her before they met you whatever or maybe they just got a friendship now that you know they don't want to break just because you've you know decided to break up with you whatever it may be i don't know but the way Kanye had to do it was very, very strange, very bizarre. But again, I do kind of commend Cuddy for quote-unquote standing up to him. 
He does continue. He says, yeah, Cardi is also bothered by the idea that people credit his success to someone other than him and his original team of producers. Patrick Plain Pat Reynolds, Oladipo Osh, um, Omisho, also known as Dot, Dr. Genius, and Emil Haney, he says, he was hesitant to sign to good music. His fear manifested when West released AOA's Hunt Outbreaks and you heard uh, Cardi's haunting vocals on the second track and his songwriting throughout, playing he what he felt was a critical role when he had yet to release his debut album. Cardi's a little stuck here. He was a young rapper who emerged in the shadows of the superstar. Okay, cool. So he might have felt like AOA's and Heartbreak came off the back of him having sessions with Kanye and maybe you know he thought maybe that was a bit of a rip off okay I never I knew I never even looked at it that way to be completely fair he says he continues here I just want to clear up what I just want to clear I just want to clear I just want to clear that up for anybody that feels like Kanye made my career or made me who I am he brought me to do he brought me on to do AOS and Heartbreak I thought that was a really fucking awesome I wanted to be part of the family and saw good music as an opportunity so I finally said yeah Kanye did not come and pluck me out of Applebee's or Bape Store okay cool that's the narrative okay because I'm only working at Apple Bape Store there's a lot of talk of Kanye for someone who didn't want to discuss him Kanye says the difference is that he's speaking about it on his own terms if there's an olive branch in the future there's somewhere lost in the woods Cardi continues with all due respect I'm not Drake who's about to take a picture with him next week and be friends again their beef is squashed that's not me <laughs> so that means the beef with Cuddy is still stuck in it it's still up and stuck there basically what he basically say him and Drake are not friends because obviously they went through what they went through and basically basically Drake ended him I forgot what he ended him with was it a diss was it a record was it a line about mental health I forgot what it was but basically he's, he's it's basically telling you very clearly that you know he's never gonna be friends with Drake essentially by proxy again there's loads of uh there's loads of uh, there's loads of people catching strays here. Kim caught a stray. Drake is catching a stray. Mad, isn't it? Kim, Kanye's kids are catching strays. He continues, says, and why, why I say, um, that's not me. Why I say I mean, I will be done with you. When I will be done with you. It's not gonna, it's gonna take a motherfucking miracle for me and that man to be friends again. I don't see it happening. He's gonna have to become a monk. <laughs> Since this is yay we're talking about, I consider it unlikely but impossible. In a twist of fate, Cuddy replaced West as a headliner for this year's Rolling Loud, but a few concert girls tossed uh, objects at him. He threatened to walk off stage and it occurred. True to his word, dropped the mic and left. Yay me while made a surprise with Dirk set. Did he mention that? Cuddy has decided to let go of most of the adult thing he can do. The twisted thing is I still love him. Oh, see, Cuddy, honestly, Kanye, man. Kanye is at the, the fucking... What's he? He's, he is the archetypal description of what's you call it. What's that thing called? Um, when you what's that term where the victims always come back to the flipping abuser? Of course, it's term. But that's he basically that guy. He says here yeah, continues. The just the thing is that I is that I love him, but I love you so much that I can kick you in the in the kick the I can kick you the fuck out of my life and be done with your ass because you're not good for me. He says, closing his sentiment with an affirmation popularized by the great turn of century philosopher Samantha Jones. I love myself more. I love myself more. Kid repeats this in a mantra, still addressing his former friend. I I didn't I didn't love myself all them years. You knew me. I love myself more, bro. I love I love myself way more. <sighs> kind of touching. I'm not going to lie, but again, it's too emotional. It's too wet and too moist for Kanye. He's gonna see this as an opportunity to maybe you know put the boot in a bit more, but. Essentially, the article itself is pretty sick. Um, if you're a fan of Cardi, I really recommend check it out. There's some great pictures on there. He obviously takes great pictures. He obviously looks great in clothes. What are those glasses by? They're by Gucci. Those glasses look fucking phenomenal. Um, his hair's always on point. Always got the sickest hair. I feel like it's very underrated in terms of haircuts, especially when it comes to the coloring stuff, the grills, the accessories. Um, this picture of him naked is pretty hilarious as well with the sock covering his willy but I wouldn't say I think the entire article is absolutely fantastic check it out if you haven't already really cool article um, Kid Cudi and Esquire the headline is Kid Cudi is alright check it out if you haven't already